Yo, 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 hello, hello. We're back. What's up, y'all? Baratunde Thurston here, live on Lockdown, episode 34. It is Thursday, the 30th of July, 2020. I see you, Stace Force. My favorite username so far, Stace Force. That's a really good name. Um, Eric Telfer, what's happening, my man? Good to have you here. Before Vegan was cool, it feels like a show. Now that you're back, thank you for coming back. Hello, hello. Um, uh, stamatakostam. Stamatakostam? Stamataka? Stam? I don't know. How to, I don't know where to break your name apart. Usernames are fun. It's like a long time ago, but it's also right now. Um, hey, 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 hey. So it's been a while. I haven't done this show. I took two weeks off. Uh, I did a comedy show two weeks ago. That was fun to um, do for some of you. Thanks for showing up. And then last week was really exciting. Last Thursday night, I did nothing. It was so cool. It was so cool to do nothing. Uh, it's good to be back. Thank you, thank you. If you're new to the show or if it's been a while, hit the question button and add to the queue things that I will riff on with you. Talk to one another in the uh, chat. Sometimes I don't always get to see that. I'm not trying to rhyme on purpose. I just want my words to have purchase. Now I can't turn it off. Stop. There. <laughs> accidental, accidental poetry. Um, so, you know, as usual, I have some things that, you know, may be on my mind that I want to share. Uh, first off, the opening song, Lose Your Job. I think that's becoming the theme song of this because I always want to dedicate that song, You About to Lose Your Job to the president of the United States of America. And I think that would be a best for everybody, including, including that person. Uh, but I just love that there's a catchy tune to go along with it because it makes me feel better about the tragedies unfolding on a constant basis in my native land. So thank you um, for internet memes. Thank you for musicians remixing. Thank you for Lose your Job. Uh, and let me do one more check to see who all is here. Hello, Brianna Jenkins, and hello, Tracy Fowler. Good to have you two back. Thank you, thank you. Good to have everyone, but I'm just giving special shout outs to regulars and people I may have shared Zoom panels with, which by this stage in the pandemic is approximately 20% of the population of the United States. I've been on a Zoom with one out of five Americans. Don't try to prove me wrong, I'm right. That's definitely sound math and science. So we are gonna get into some things and I wanna start, um, I watched Barack Obama's eulogy of John Lewis. Let me update that language. I watched former president Barack Obama's eulogy of representative John Lewis today. I watched it like 1.6 times. <laughs> um, it, was, it was really good. Did you, did you watch that? Normally I, I start with a rant and things that are making me mad, but that made me feel so good. And it was like a new feeling. I hadn't felt good about watching like a public figure speak on a screen with the word president in front of them in a long time. And it was nice. And there were like three of them that spoke. Uh, Bush spoke. Uh, the younger and uh, Clinton spoke. I didn't watch them, but they said things. And then I watched Obama more than once because I figured like whatever those two said, Obama probably did it better, like the job itself. So why waste my time? You know, it's a, it's a black man's funeral. I'm listening to the black dude. So uh, Obama, Obama brought it. And I think I have an expectation of what Barack Obama is going to say, what he's going to sound like. And he's so practiced at taking this um, generous, measured, patient tone with his rambunctious, out of their goddamn mind country. Um, 
And he's just so calm and so patient. Well, America, you know, there's more good than bad. And it's like, really, bro? Like, so it was nice to just, homie let loose a little bit. I feel like he tapped into that anger translator from Kim Peel and just laid it out. In particular about uh, federal forces occupying cities, wielding batons, breaking the bones of Americans, trying to exercise their First Amendment rights. He said that. He talked about that. Uh, about the attempt to undermine the U.S. Postal Service. Talked about that. And then he got pretty aggressive in terms of his policy proposals. At least, like, I don't know everything the man has ever said. Maybe 97.2%. So there's a chance I missed something because there's a lot of Obama stuff happening. But when he started talking about the Voting Rights Act and not just the need to renew it and bring it back and rename it for John Lewis, who bled for it, but he's like, we got to go farther. Let's have automatic voter registration. Let's have a national voting holiday. Let's automatically reinstate the voting rights of formerly incarcerated people. I was like, woke bombers in the house. Yo, somebody's been marching in these streets. I mean, not actually, because that would be very a spectacular scene, but probably unsafe for like a lot of reasons. But you know what I'm saying? He has been like tuning into these streets. He's been following Kendrick Sampson on IG Live, yo. Um, I thought he was going to start pouring libations. Like he was really feeling it. And I really liked it because we have nothing to lose that we haven't already lost. We can only gain at this stage. And we got to press it, pedal to the metal. So I just, I highly recommend it. Uh, Michelle Obama's podcast came out today. I haven't listened to it yet. I did subscribe. I pressed the follow button even though technically I don't even know if it's a podcast because it's a Spotify exclusive. And by definition, I think a podcast is like on an open RSS feed and able to be viewed through multiple interfaces and software applications. But look, I, I'm not like a tech nerd being picky about stuff. I'm happy for her show. And it's another chance to listen to another Obama, which when does that go bad? Like very rarely, very rarely. So I, I like it. I like it. And I encourage you all to um, check out any part of that service. John Lewis was one of the greatest of all time. Zuh. One of the greatest uh, of all times. All right. Let me um, check in with you and uh, see what's going down. <laughs> oh, Priv to Prague uh, posted a clip on your page. Good. Good for that. Thank you. Thank you. Lily Z6212, watch the whole funeral. I mean, share with us what that was like. I How long did that take? That was a great use of time. Savage Ohm canceled meetings for it. That's beautiful to see. Oh, I'm so happy to see. And some people are watching it right now. Well, okay, but you're watching me. I'm not saying that sounded terrible. In fact, leave me, go watch it. Go. I'm not trying to say don't watch the funeral, watch me instead. You know... It is live. It's been said. Here we go. Um, let's um, <clears throat> let's check. Jossie Cunningham's in the house. My brother. Hello, hello, hello. I feel like we owe each other a non-IG interaction. Let's let's work on that. Um, Coach Cunningham's in the house. While Coach is here, let me tell you uh, what's going on <laughs> physically in in life. So um, I've been I've been working out. I've been working out, not crazy, nothing crazy. A couple miles of walking, doing some mobility drills. Got some workouts from Tim McGraw's book. You know, Tim, Tim McGraw's taking a special place in my heart in terms of the workouts. I'll, uh, I'll have to share more with y'all about that later. But this is mostly, again, every time Jossie shows up, check out Jossie's profile and you will understand why I feel the need to like big up my own physicality. Just, just look at, just look at any image or video or like hand scribbled sketch drawing on Jossie's profile and you'll understand it. His existence inspires you to a, a better physical existence. Um, so keep, keep being great, man. I've, I've liked seeing you got a whole studio set up. You got good lights. Now I'm like, okay, the Jossie show is coming. The Jossie show is coming. Uh, so you're an inspiration for real. Everybody check out Jossie. Whenever you come on, if I see your name pop up, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to plank right now. Some of y'all might remember a couple months back, I just planked because Jossie showed up. So I feel like I'm getting better at uh, managing my enthusiasm, my energy, my jealousy, and my sense of uh, 
under accomplishment when it comes to the physical act of living good. But that's enough uh, of that. Let me check the bucket and see. My goodness, y'all have put a lot in uh, the bucket. Okay. Um, Daniel Zoller's in the house. Daniel, we've, we've known Daniel for, for many months now. Uh, and our heart is with Daniel's heart. Uh, he used to be the Daniel Isaiah, uh, for those of you who remember um, episode 12 or something. I don't even remember the number. Um, but Daniel asks, what's the plot of the best unproduced movie slash rom-com set in the pandemic? So I think that would probably involve um, a precocious young man excited to get his pandemic dating on, but uncertain about what to do. And so he turns to Instagram Live week in and week out, looking for love in all the wrong comment threads. He pops from live to live, seeing if anybody wants to interact with him. And over time, he finds something that might be love. We don't know, but we are on that journey with him. He presents us with a, a grave challenge in one of these interactions. He's been invited to the house of a woman he's only known remotely through the pandemic. But he doesn't know if it's safe to go to this house. <laughs> yeah, Dan, you see where this is going. This is your life. That's the plot of the best unproduced movie rom-com, your life. Do that. But also, you know, hit us in the comments how things going. Um, you know, share what you will. We got a lot of interested people. I'm, I suspect that 17% uh, of the people show up to live on lockdown now just to find out what's going on with uh, one of our lead characters, Daniel, uh, and the supporting character that is his heart. All right, that's, that's, that's how we do it. That's the trailer. That's how we rock that. Hello, Dutch as hell. Welcome back. Good to have you here. Indigo Mac. Hey, hey, hey. I like seeing these familiar names. All right, let's go. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, this is interesting. I've seen a couple people asking about something that I know nothing about. So I have to pop it into the uh, unbranded search engine box and see if I have anything real time to say. Um, something, yeah, I just, I don't know what's going on. This is the hard part of trying to be responsive super live. I don't know what, what this person did. Um, so I will have to deal with that another time. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, here we go, here we go. Jonesy, JP Jonesy, uh, put in the hat, vote by mail, returning to school, and bar. <sighs> the attorney general, the lapdog of the... Uh, rabid dog that sits in the White House is doing nobody any favors except that one one person. I don't have too much more to add about Bill Barr. Uh, assuming we have the ability to record accurate history, it will be unkind to him. And I look forward to uh, the great rebuke that will come from all who follow in his footsteps or ever hear his name. May it bring shame to his family for a thousand generations. I'm going to get Game of Thrones with the curses up in here for A.G. Barr. What a terrible attorney, Generalissimo. Just a terrible being um, in terms of how he's occupied that office. Returning to school, there was a, a, a many comments about returning to school. So I have some thoughts as a non-parent. <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody what to do with their kids. But uh, I want to defer first to uh, better information on this. Dr. Michael Osterholm, every time I'm just going to say his name, um, he's been very clear uh, about the complexities of reopening schools and how we should do that. So he has a weekly podcast. It's, worth, it's really worth listening to. Like, stop watching something else and, and listen to his one-hour podcast every week. He's been so honest, he's been humble, he's updated his thinking along the way. So I, um, I defer to Osterholm, and I have not listened to this week's show, and usually in preparation for this one, I like to have Osterholm in my head so that I can do a, a light translation, 
but I don't know what he said this week. I only know what he said last week uh, about the school openings. And what I suspect remains true is there is no blanket answer on this that is going to depend very much on each school district, if not each school itself and each classroom, and that we've got to do something that we have been unable or unwilling to do so far, which is have plans and stick to them uh, as far as protocols for what happens when someone is infected, as far as having contact tracing infrastructure in place. And in, in, in communities where the prevalence of this disease is, uh, what's, the, what's the measurement? Uh, out of control. I think that's the numerical rating um, that is you know, being experienced in many counties across this occasionally, sometimes hard to rememberly great nation that we live in. In areas with high transmission rates, with R knots of, yo, what's going on? Um, it's just it's too risky that we gotta slow this whole thing down. There's there's something to this COVID that's uh, it's kind of like a forced um, stillness, you know, a forced meditation, like control your breathing, pace yourself, and. When the transmission rate of the disease gets too hot, too high, we just can't do certain things. It's almost like engine overheating. And you just got to pull over to the side of the road, let the engine cool off before you get back out there, or you're going to destroy the vehicle. And, and so different parts of the country are moving at different speeds in terms of the transmission rate. And some are just running too hot. And you don't want to like... I'm going to jack up this metaphor. I think I was on a good path, but I'm just feeling this other one. So I'm going to, it's my show. I can do what I want. I got nobody telling me what to do. What are you going to do? So, um, but I think if you try to, uh, if you try to make moves when your vehicle's moving too fast, like for example, get out the car, that's dangerous. You know, you will hurt yourself and you'll probably damage your car. Um, and so I think we just have to have a certain pace of the disease in place before we can take on riskier behaviors. Like you don't want to, what's that old thing, ghost ride the whip? Like you don't want to do that at 80 miles an hour. That's not, that's no longer, you're no longer ghost riding the whip. You're just jumping out of a car at 80 miles an hour. That's suicide. That's not a fun TikTok anymore. Even though no one on TikTok ghost rides the whip because the only people who did that were on like live journal because it's intergenerational references happening here because I span worlds, you know what I'm saying? Of technology and culture. But my larger point is this, we got to slow down the transmission of this disease before we can do things like reopen major parts of our society. For example, bars, you know, um, not a, not a high, not a, not an essential service for some alcohol is in moderation, but bars, not so much. And schools are on that line because even though young people, especially very young ones, may not uh, transmit much, much amongst themselves, if they bring it home or if there's a teacher who's compromised, and 25% of teachers in the U.S. are compromised in some way by age or uh, health considerations, we got to have a plan. And part of that plan is knowing where the disease is in terms of its transmission rate. And, you know, again, at very high speeds of transmission, contact tracing doesn't make any sense. It's just everybody got it. Like, that's your contact tracing. Oh, oh, you're, trans you're at a 10% rate of infection rate in your area? Everybody got it. Like, your r naught is 1.8? Everybody got it. Like, so there's just no point in the contact tracing because um, it's just, it's faster and safer and probably more relevant to assume everybody has it. But once you slow that down, then you get your tracing, then you get some supported isolation in place. But America's not, I mean, the things, I'm, these are all theories I'm talking about. Nobody living like this right now. America is on some other stuff and the world has built a wall around us. And it's like, you all need to stay your ass at home with your fast self, <laughs> your COVID fast self. The rest of the world talking to America like a black mom in 1983. Are you so fast, America? So... Yeah. Um, there was something else in JP Jonesy's question and I just wiped it away. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I, I lost it. But let me, um, let me go back into my hat because I didn't... There are these moments that I have on the internet. Life, which is just life now. You, we shouldn't... 
do we even call it the internet anymore? Like, that's kind of a cute idea. Like there's an internet and then there's us. Like we're just fully merged into the matrix now. So I was just looking at one of the screens on this thing called life. And it was a screen that um, I go to from time to time when I need more anxiety in my life, when I'm feeling a sense of progress, but want to be reminded that there are ratchet garbage trash people all over the place. When I am at peace with myself and I want to be reminded that war exists everywhere outside of myself. And this helps bring that war into me. I speak, of course, of a place known as Twitter. And so I opened the life screen of Twitter. Yes, I did. And uh, Twitter comes with a menu of options when you log in. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a menu of horrors. They call them trending topics, but it's truly just a list of what's going to upset your emotional stability the most right now. And the beauty of the menu of horrors is the listing on the menu doesn't tell you what's inside, right? It'd be like going to a restaurant and you just see like, Burger. And you're like, oh, cool, burger. I like burgers. Give me that. And then they show up with like a Nazi rally and people denying that the Holocaust happened or that Sandy Hook happened, right? They're like, I wanted the burger. Why are you hitting me with all? So that's what the Twitter trending topics is. It's a huge misdirection. But I'm hungry and I feel like I got to choose something because it's it's right there on the menu. So I know, I know what's going to happen. I know I'm about to get disappointed or broken a little bit inside. Like a little piece of my soul is going to crack off of me like a piece of Arctic ice. And yet I click because their engineering and applied mathematics and server side economic distortion and hacking of my mentality know me better than I know myself. They're like, bro, you going to click this menu item. Why are you acting like you got free will? We own your will. And so it was that I entered the menu of doom. And atop the list, I swear to science and all gods that may have ever existed, I saw demon sperm. Demon sperm. Did, did this happen to anybody else? Were you just somewhat innocently minding your business, maybe wondering, oh, I wonder what's going on with John Lewis's uh, lying in state. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if the president of the United States has decided to just uh, walk off into the sea. Uh, maybe that, maybe that's happened. Today. Or we've declared war on Germany. Who knows? Like there are so many possibilities for what that Twitter screen could tell us. And I embraced for so Many things like I am prepared for an earthquake to unleash a fire that actually melts the remaining polar ice caps. It like I'm prepared, like, okay, cool. Yeah, of course, there was like a you know, it was the earthquake climate crisis fire, and now the seas are going to rise tomorrow instead of by the year 2050. Like, that wouldn't surprise me as a trending topic. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it, I'm ready for it all. I'm like, bring it on, Twitter and Twitter was like, you're not ready for this. You're not ready, Baratunde. I know you think you've been through some things. I know you're like, I've been on the internet since there was no internet. But click on demon sperm. I dare you. I double dog dare you. I'm done, y'all. I, I don't know how much we can take. I thought that we had been pushed past the brink. I thought the engine was running so hot that if we accelerated further, everything would explode and the car would just shut down. But we're still, the, the whole psyche of this country is just, we're going to ride this shit till the wheels fall off and then keep pressing the gas. So demon sperm. We live in a world where that's a, that's a thing that I had to learn about 
because <sighs> President of the United States retweeted a doctor who had a lot of things to say about the COVID, like such as there's a cure, you don't need a mask, lies, lies, lies. Uh, the cure is hydroxychloroquine, lies. And filled this time in this press conference with utter nonsense, with a denial of service attack on our senses and our sensibilities and our common sense, all of that. And this fool, because he is a fool, he's like the jester and the king rolled into one and the court. Like he is all of that. And he's just present retreat. Oh, we'll own the lips. <laughs> She's black. <laughs> And if anyone has listened to her and they have and believed her and they have, people are going to die. People are going to die for this. And this lady is just another attention hogging charlatan in the spirit of any money grubbing preacher from any denomination ever who like buys the Bentley and lets his flock starve. She just wants that attention. She's like, Mr. President, I'm in town. I'd be happy to meet with you. So that's what this is about. Her moment in the sun. The people pushing this are the same people who have been promoting mass death for months. Bunch of right-wing overfunded yahoos at Breitbart, etc. Wait for those Corona tribunals. I got a long Arya Stark list of folks who need to be held to account for mass death. And when you start looking at the things that this doctor has said before, like, oh, who is this person that the president is retweeting? It can't be good. It's never good. It's never like Jesus. <laughs> like he never actually just like tweet something cool Jesus said or like a founding father or like Sojourner. Like there's a lot of messages, you know, he could just be like, oh, this account just tweets out dope statements from Sojourner Truth. I could reach, I'll retweet that. He never, it's never good. It's always some nonsense. Deadly now nonsense, not cute. The cuteness died with 150,000 Americans who we've lost, so many of them unnecessarily. So game's over, we lose. <laughs> Hope you've had fun playing. And this dude retweets this lady and like, okay, so Guys, we had to look into the background of this doctor to see who the hell she is and what she's all about. And what she's all about is blaming women for their own health problems. If a woman has experienced fibroids or endometriosis, the, the good doctor believes that this is because she's been having sexual relations with demons. Mm hmm I had to learn all that this week. I had to learn that. Because a bunch of white people in America felt insecure in their own unearned power and just had to give us Donald Trump. I had to do that. Thank you, my fellow Americans, for demon sperm. I appreciate that. That was real, that was a real good use of time. You know, I could have written like another book instead. I could have been helping out a neighbor, not from COVID. I could have been contact tracing because we had this whole thing under wraps, but instead me and so many others had to learn what the hell demon sperm was all about and why everybody's talking about it. Because we don't have a president. We have a lost, broken maniac of a person who is threatened by the idea of the people he's supposed to be governing. So afraid of us. He's afraid of us. He's so afraid he's trying to shut down the postal service. Mail. Like, <laughs> he's trying to cancel mail. I, I knew there was a high tolerance for shenanigans and racism and sexism and all the ill stuff that's helped get us where we are. But like just breaking the postal system. I'm like, but why people get mailed? Like your voters. They, they need mail too. 
don't get, and they get their checks. A lot of your supporters, like a lot of them, get those government checks, the social security checks, those subsidies from the federal governments to the poorer states. That's it's not a California type of thing. <laughs> it's not New York. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, some of your favorite red states need the mail. They need prescription drugs. They're unwell, you know? And you're going to sacrifice them again. You already sacrificed them to the COVID. Now you're going to sacrifice them to delayed delivery on their benefits, on their medicines. Are you, are you, cra oh yeah, of, of course you're crazy. But is everyone around you? Oh, oh there, everyone around you is crazy too. Okay. This is where we are. There's some good news. There's some good news. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. After I, after I experienced the demon sperm involuntary education course, which I, I am owed something for that. I want reparations just for that. Like, yes, intergenerational trauma is real and my family is less wealthy because we were denied opportunities to retain farming lands in South Carolina or Virginia or own property or get promoted to certain, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got that, old news. But this happened this week and I want my, I want my time back. I want my sense of mental stability back. I want demon sperm reparations. And that's real quick and you don't have to argue, oh, with this, we don't know who's responsible. The survivors aren't alive. And I'm right here. This happened to me this week. I have screenshots. I have receipts and records. Like I'll take it to the Hague or the International Criminal Court or the UN or a special subcommittee, uh, wh whatever. Like give me Pelosi and we can just sort this out. I had to learn. I had to learn. It's madness. You know, you know, it's crazy. Like you're not, here's what I want you to know. It's not you. You're doing great. You're doing fine. They're crazy, right? You're not losing your mind. They're losing their grip. And we just gotta just toss them out. Just toss them out the car at whatever speed. So we can get this thing back on track. Learned what demon sperm was. Saw, saw uh, someone who I had considered kind of a leader in the black universe post this dumbass video. Got into it in the comments. Lost more time. More reparations needed. That was black on black crime right there. And, um, and then I saw something. You know, I saw, I saw uh, the president of the United States tweet some more stuff today about delaying the election and blah, 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 fraud, fraud, fraud. Cause he's afraid, he's afraid of us. And in a way that's how it should be, you know? But what he does with that fear is, is gonna be interesting to watch. By interesting, I mean probably devastating and damaging and hard to recover from, but recover we will because we must. And I've been on this kick since doing this show that yeah, yeah, the president, I don't expect anything. But it's not just him. It's you, where's the Mitch McConnell's? There's the whole Senate. There's a whole Republican Party which is signed up for all of it, all of it. And and these are the same people who want a random Muslim to apologize for the actions of another random Muslim anytime some bomb goes off somewhere in the world. They're they're ready to like link. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I heard you. I heard you rep Islam. So what you think about what happened over in Abu Dhabi? Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna renounce that? What are you pro-death? Like, these are the people, the same people. There's a list of them. I can get, again, I have an Arya Stark list. I'll share it sometime. It's long. And uh, these people want to assign responsibility, demand accountability, and uh, want you to stand against somebody you have some presumed affiliation with when that person does wrong. So if you worship the same God, you're responsible for everybody else if that God's name is Allah. But if you're actually a member of the same political party and go out of your way to say nice things about, defend, and remain silent in the face of 
absolutely fascistic shit on the regular. What? I'm, so, I'm not hearing. Where's the, the... Is your outrage machine? Is it broken? Do we need to... Maybe you want to try... You got to turn it off and turn it back on. Your outrage machine... Republican Party... Your outrage machine is broken. Unplug it. Try unplugging it. Plugging it back in. Maybe... um. Maybe smack yourself in the face a couple of times. It, it, yeah, it happens it happens to me too. You're not alone sometimes. I forget my morals. <laughs> you know, it's inconvenient sometimes to actually believe things and enact upon them. But I'm going to give you a chance. Smack it upside the head. Unplug it, plug it back in. Control, alt, delete. Maybe, I don't know if you're rocking Windows. Is it? Is your outrage machine, is it on Windows or is it on a Mac? Is it... Uh, Oh, option, command, escape. You want to try force quit. You want to force quit the process because your outrage machine doesn't seem to be functioning when we need it most. You traitorous monsters. So that's that's been my take, you know, <laughs> give or take. And um, I've been waiting and I've been searching and I've been hoping that somebody self-identified as a conservative, Republican, Trump voting, whatever, will be like, you know what? This is too much for me. And I'd be okay for a moment not hitting them with all the other things on the list that should have been too far. Children in cages, mass kidnappings, you know, like that broke a lot of us. But hey, I get it. They weren't your kids. Why would you care about children being kidnapped when they're not yours? Like, I totally get that. That's a super reasonable position. So if you're still a Republican, still identifying with this president, and you are not absolutely disgusted by and disavowing when this government, at his direction, mass kidnapped a bunch of children. I get it because they weren't your kids. Like, I totally, who cares about those kids, right? Like, why would other people's children be my concern? It's not like we have a whole society premised on caring for other people's children. So I get that. And I get the Russia thing, you know, you don't like Robert Mueller. He has a funny face. It's fine. I get that too. He wasn't good on TV. He's not a great actor. You know, he was like serious. You know, who wants that? Why would you, why would you want someone serious when you could have a clown? You know, not just as like a special prosecutor, but as a commander in chief. Like I would totally vote clown every time. Like I get, might be fun to put a clown in charge of foreign policy. What could go wrong? So I get why you would stick with him for that. When he helps kill 150,000 Americans, that was a little harder for me. That was a little harder for me. And then when he's like, yo, we're going to try to delay this election. Where, where, where are you? Where are you? And then it turns out, in the distance, I heard a lone voice. This is wrong. What, what was that? Was that, a, was that a white guy calling out another white guy? A republic? This is fascistic. Wait, wait, what, what? Are you Antifa? Who's saying that? Who's, y'all hear that? I voted for him and this is madness. Where is this coming from? And I, I, lo and behold, I open up the New York Times app and I see Stephen G. Calabresi, co-founder of the Federalist Society, Northwestern University professor, saying Trump might try to postpone the election, that's unconstitutional. This deserves something. This deserves something. Open and paragraph. I have voted Republican in every presidential election since 1980. Well, that was a mistake, including voting for Donald Trump in 2016. But again, why would you care about him grabbing other women's hoo-hahs if you didn't own those women? Like, if they weren't your women, I get why you wouldn't care about that. So I'll... I'll just let that slide. You know, I'll just let slide the fact that you were totally cool with him grabbing someone else's property, I guess, in your whatever. I wrote op-eds and a law review article protesting what I believe was an unconstitutional investigation by Robert Mueller. Again, long face, not good on TV. I also wrote an op-ed opposing President Trump's impeachment because presumably a Federalist Society person wants the President of the United States to leverage foreign policy solely for domestic political revenge activities. Okay. But 
I am frankly appalled by the president's recent tweet seeking to postpone the November election. Now, we've, we've heard a lot of Republicans being appalled. There's been, if I got a dime for every tweet where a Republican was like, this makes me uncomfortable, I would be Jeff Bezos. Now, I wouldn't be a billionaire. I would just have no hair left. <laughs> but, but I am frankly appalled by the president's recent tweet seeking to postpone the November election. And so recently, I had taken as political hyperbole the Democrats' assertion that President Trump is a fascist. Until recently? We've been watching different screens. Maybe your trending topics are different from mine. Maybe you didn't get the demon sperm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Twitter and these algorithms. He might be seeing a whole different version of this administration. Let's extend some grace to Mr. Calabresi. But this latest tweet is fascistic and is itself grounds for the president's immediate impeachment again by the House of Representatives and his removal from office by the Senate. Raise a glass to freedom, something that will never change. Yo, I'm getting Hamilton Federalist paper vibes from this Federalist Society homie. What? To Calabrese. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is, this is what it took. Now, look, I, I haven't checked out Ted Cruz's Twitter account to see if he was like, second it. Can I get a third? Third, I, the motion pad. Like, I don't, I don't know if it works that way. Like, is there a quorum? Are they having a secret meeting on WebEx? You know, like the ones with the tech leaders this week? Um, if, Jeff, if Jeff Bezos is at that meeting, he should help them out. So, yeah, I'm not going to read the rest of the op-ed. That's strong. That's strong. And I, I just, I clearly don't agree with Calabrese on many things his vote in 2016, his opposition to the impeachment, and probably a bunch of economic stuff and civil liberty stuff and all. But credit where it's due. And even though he's late, welcome. Because the more people who see this, I'm not saying make him uh, Joe, Biden's, Joe Biden's VP pick. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, he shouldn't get a speaking spot at the DNC. He should say this at the RNC, you know what I'm saying? He should hack into their Zoom and say this to their faces because we we've been known. We've been known. Wow, I had a lot to say about that. Let me check back in with you. <laughs> I have not even looked. Oh my goodness. I hope this was not uh, too much, too much. Sometimes, you know, I just get a little worked up when I feel uh, democracy slipping through <laughs> y'all got me y'all got me dying next week live on lockdown special guest calabrese <laughs> yo shout out to uh stomata stomata custom 75 i appreciate that uh all right let me i didn't go to the bucket very much um and there's a lot in here so let's see how fast i can address some of these things um this is this is a uh, propellerhead Jane, uh, propellerhead dot Jane. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend by leaving the dot. I hate when people leave out parts of my name. The dot's clearly very important to you because you put it there. So propellerhead dot Jane, how do we stay positive with so much uncertainty? Well, Vernet helps, but if you're not into that, uh, that's cool. Take walks, talk to friends, make friends. Uh, Spend time enjoying things that are not about maybe pending doom. And I'll answer this question for myself. How do I stay positive with so much uncertainty? Because there is a lot of uncertainty. This is not an easy time. I cook. I, I turned all of my surveillance cameras onto the backyard to watch the critters at night. Yo, last night, three raccoons. Like, in formation. Like, they were basically like moving to Beyonce. Coincidentally, right before the earthquake, they were just like, shoop, shoop, shoop. I was like, what do they know? Rah! Right? Raccoons be knowing stuff. So I, <laughs> I find joy in nature. That's a long way of saying that. Um, and I remember that uh, we're only here for a short time. I think about people like John Lewis. 
who saw a lot of progress in his life, didn't see it all done, and entered the world and left it in very different states. And, uh, and there's a great video back way back in my feed. There's a black dude in an orange shirt. His name's Daniel Giles. He's on here as Upriser, U-P-R-H-I-Z-E-R. And he's a climate activist. And I interviewed him for an earlier version of, of Live on Lockdown. And I asked him, like, how do you stay committed and working to, toward all these goals? And so I, I suggest you go watch that video. Just look for a video of a black man that's not me in an orange shirt. It should, it should stand out in the, in the IGTV grid. But he was like, look, maybe I'm not here to see the finish line. I just want to contribute to the movement. Um, and some humility about what people went through before us. Some of that helps remain positive, just a sense of relative uh, gratitude for all that we do have, even though there's a lot that we're still missing. Uh, but seriously, those raccoon videos, that, that keeps me pretty positive. That keeps me positive. Um, I should also say, you know, it's so, it's so funny. I'm, uh, I'm making another show. And, and so part of why this show has not been on for the past two weeks is because I've I got more Zooming to do. How to Citizen with Baratunde is coming. It's coming in a few weeks, and we've already started recording the show. And this week, I had two incredible conversations. Uh, with this show, we are taking that word citizen back from the haters, from the dividers, from the, from the paper pushers who want to use it just as a weapon for those who don't have a certain legal status. And we're reclaiming this term as a verb that invites participation in our society by everyone to reclaim our collective power. That's the show. And, and so we're starting off this show so strong. Like you don't, I, I'm a positive person. So, and I like to think that I do some good work in the world with the, the little slot I have. I'm telling y'all these first episodes, they're good. And it's not because I'm so great. Like I don't talk that much, but I am in conversation with people Valerie Cower is in our premiere. Eric Liu uh, is in our premiere. And, and we got to talk with Eric, with the audience, with the community around him. So we, we taped the podcast for the most part live, inspired by Live on Lockdown. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, you want to be in the room where it happens as we make this show and not wait for it to hit your Spotify, your iTunes or whatever, um, Join my email list, baratunde.com slash email, or shoot me a text and, uh, and sign up for my text messages. It's all in my profile link, or you can just hit the text button in my profile link. Uh, tell me I sent you. That was, you see what I did? That was, <laughs> I'm so annoying. Like, I hate me for what I just did. But whatever. My show. I can be corny. If I want to, no one can tell me nothing. So How to Citizen with Baratunde, um, Eric and I talked about power, Valerie and I talked about love, and, and there's more coming what we got booked next week. We just confirmed a double header. Um, so you want to you wanna be there with, because I let y'all uh, in and we ask questions together uh, of our guests or of me. So it's kind of like this vibe, but not this vibe at all, because I get to see your face on the screen. And um, I think it's going to be very special. And I think it's something, it's something I need. <laughs> I hope it's something you need too. I need something to look forward to, uh, not just rail against. And I don't want to spend my life thinking about demon sperm. You know what I'm saying? Like no one, no one should. Now, when I say it out loud, it's like, well, obviously. But uh, how to citizen with Baratunde? Sign up for the email uh, or the text. Those would be the best way. Or become a patron, you know, if, if you have money to spare, I will accept it because that's going to help me pay for more staffing um, because I'm generating a lot of content and I can't even manage. This has mostly been a one person operation, um, mostly. So more staff will help get more of this out into the world. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, that, that next taping of, uh, of How the Citizen is going to happen next, uh, next Wednesday. And more precise details will come uh, via email and or text and to my patrons. All right. I was trying to speed read through your questions and here I am. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here I don't know about, but uh, I'm going to 
promote this message. We got to push early voting. Don't wait for November. How to get that message out loud. About to lose your job. Thank you. Uh, Stamata Custom 75. You've been on it. I've just seen a few comments. I like your name. I don't know. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but welcome to the club. So, um, yeah, don't wait for November. And, and listen, I, I've been thinking about this whole idea of being counted at the ballot and in the census, and I wish I had more money, <laughs> like, like Bezos-level money. So the, the self-reporting count on the census is low. It's lower than it was the last time. It's like among the lowest it's ever been. It's about 62% have self-reported through the internet. And now the census has to send people out to your homes. And that's slow and bad for everybody. This administration has been trying to disenfranchise us in many ways, um, including through the census, because they know how much power we have by just being counted. You know, that is an, that is an act of civic power just to be counted. So please, I, I am I am asking you so from the heart, like if you have not done your own census, like if you're showing up right here, right now, you have the time. So there's no excuse on that end. Go to census.gov and, and just do it, um, please. And then tell other people to do the census because what is determined by that is the members of the House of Representatives, how many a district gets, the ability to document discrimination or need by just knowing how many of certain types of people live where. Um, the allocation of money for things like infrastructure comes through the census. There's, and there's more. There's like, I wish I had it in my head and I don't have it fully loaded, but that's a hint. It's not just like, oh, I get counted. It's not a vague thing. It's a very concrete thing. And I, I don't feel like I have the power to just get a megaphone to America. This is, there's, there's 39 of you here right now. <laughs> so now 38, somebody doesn't like the census. Now, now I'm going to stop looking at that number. It's depressing. So <laughs> for whoever is here, like take that on. Amplify this. T tell the people in your circle, your friends, your family, your neighbors, just bring it up. Have you done your census? That'd be most helpful. And same with the early voting. Do that do too. Uh, Vicky Velcro says, out of work paralegal who used to work at immigration and citizenship ready and willing to intern. Okay, Vicky Velcro. Yo, hit me up. Uh, hit me on baritunday.com. Send me something through the web form. Let's see. We, we have things that need doing. So that's, that's pretty dope. Um, all right. Again, I'm failing. We have probably, I started after the hour. So we probably have about five minutes. Thank you for that push on early voting. Uh, find out when your early voting deadline is. You're resourceful. You're watching me here right now. You can do this. And every state is different. So figure out what's, what's the deal in yours. And, and just practice. You know, I checked my voter registration and then I realized I couldn't figure it out. And then I had to go to a different website. And I was like, oh, the, the county of LA didn't have it, but the city did. And I was like, oh, whew. Because I don't have a California driver's license because I'm new here because I'm from a place that's very different, which is the East Coast. And uh, I still have a New York license. Okay. Ooh, I, this is fun. I want to uh, give this to the chat. What new screensavers will you use this February? Uh, from Seven Roar. Sure, Seven Roar. So here's, I'm going to show you my screensaver. Uh, let's see if I can, if I can do that pretty quickly. Flip. So my screensaver says, stop looking at me. And I thought, you know, I thought that was pretty, I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, because I'm, I'm in a lot of, I was before COVID in a lot of public spaces and conferences or planes or lobbies of hotels and people always up in your stuff and so i thought this would be like check yourself kind of message so that's my screensaver but now it's just me telling myself to stop it doesn't even make any sense so i do need a, a new screensaver i'm i'm down for for something uh, let's see what else we got up in here type and form this is fun i want to hear from the from the uh from the crowd on this one, the superhero you wish would drag DJT out of the White House by his tie. I mean, 
Black Panther would be great. T'Challa could do that. Uh, but honestly, though, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So here's my list. Black Panther. Then like Groot. I actually want it to be Groot uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy because he's this tiny little thing. Like it would be so insulting. It would be so insulting for the president of the United States to be dragged out by like the little, or, or maybe Hawkeye, who's not even a superhero, just a dude with a bow and arrow. Like he doesn't even take a superhero. Um, or like Hawkeye's kid, right? Like that's even better when he's like out with his daughters, showing them how to shoot. Like Hawkeye's daughter. That'd be great because like a woman dragging him out who not even a superhero, who just maybe would grow into one. But that would be fitting. It, it, should, it should probably be a woman. Uh, Wonder Woman I see in here. I mean, Wonder Woman would be great. But I, I just like it being like a non-superhero woman because this president is garbage. Garbage. Garbage as a president. Garbage as a human being. Uh, will you make a new Ted X video? FY, it's a Ted video. And uh, nothing in, new in the works. That took a lot out of me. That took a lot out of me. But I have several. If you search YouTube for Baratunde and Ted, I actually have like three or four versions of TED Talks out there. There's the big one about race that I did last year. That was on the TED main stage. But I also have a TED Talk about... Um, Comedy and technology. It's called Hacking Comedy. I did at TEDx Kansas City. And I have another one at TEDx Midwest that I did about the time I helped uh, rescue people trapped on an exit ramp off a of Lakeshore Drive during an epic Chicago blizzard around 2011. Crazy story. Crazy story. You should find out when TEDx Midwest, Baratunde. I haven't even thought about that in a long time. And then there's, I did one about how to be black, but I don't think that's... Um, but my book came out. I don't think that one's online. Thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, so, yeah, this is the one just for, for transparency's purpose. People said thoughts on Z-Way, uh, Fumudo. I don't know what that means. It is, this is not... The algorithm did not serve up to me whatever happened with Z-Way. So I'm going to find out. Maybe I'll have thoughts or I'll just have them and not share them which is the default setting <laughs> to just have thoughts and not share them. That's the, that's how we did it before social media. We just thought things and then didn't say anything about it. Uh, ooh, new team names. That's great. I heard a rec a recommendation for the Washington DC football team of the red tails, uh, which, you know, is a nod to the Tuskegee airmen. I, I love that. I would love the red tails, Tuskegee airmen, like, DC, Chocolate City, Black People Central, you know, Tuskegee Airmen, less sung heroes, World War II, we hang our hats on that. Oh man, I have so much more to say, but I only have a minute. And those of you who remember the last time I lost the show because IG was wiling out, not, not going to have that happen. So I will thank you all for showing up. Welcome back to Live on Lockdown. I hope this was fun. And uh, please... Uh, check out We're Having a Moment, the podcast I just wrapped. It's still good. It still works. The audio still sounds like audio. And sign up for the um, How to Citizen with Baratune Day by joining my mailing list, by joining my text messaging, or becoming a patron over on Patreon. I uh, appreciate all your, your comments and your questions. Sorry for those I didn't get to. And I hope, you know, if Montre75 is out there, I didn't see your name pop up, and I feel like this will be the first time Montre's missed it in a while. Okay, 20 seconds, cutting it close. Thank you.